Hey there, Tim with Perkins Roofing here. It's a really hot summer day in Cape Coral, Florida. We're on the west coast of the state getting this roof done. That was a casualty from our 2022 hurricane here on this side. You can see there's still a lot of tarps around here in this neighborhood and a lot of damages. You see a tarp home there. Damages on that home, tarp is ripped off, broken tiles. Uh, people are still waiting to get their roofs done. If you want to get it done, and you want to get it done the right way, you can call us at Perkins Roofing. We can come across the state and help out. Like we are for these folks here. Now, I'll go open the roof and show you what we have going on. This is a six on 12. It was a tile roof, all the tile we've already demoed. This is dumpster number four here that we're on now with this demo. It's a big house, 61 squares gutters like i said six on 12 slope so it's pretty sloped i'll show you what's going on up there the demo is pretty tough on this one because the original installers the roof is only a few years old uh but it's hurricane damage obviously but the original installers they stuck the peel and stick directly to the wood which makes it for a very tough tear off especially on a six on 12 slope so we'll go up there and i'll kind of show you what's going on uh as we try to get this project dried in and we wait for our tiles to come. So you can see they're maintaining the gutters. So we put this piece of wood here so that the ladder's not against the gutters to dent it up. One of the other things we've done here, this is Polyglass TU Plus, 80 mil. We always go for the heavier duty self-adhered. But you see these circles here? You see these little scars that came with the paper? We're gonna take care of those. That's why we circled little issues like that as we wrap up this hip right here. So this roof is getting done via high velocity, or Florida Building Code, not high velocity hurricane zone. Uh, they didn't want to pay for the high velocity hurricane zone upgrade. So we're just doing Florida Building Code. But you can see here, here's our valley metal. They did pay for all aluminum upgrades because it's waterfront. So we've got aluminum valley metal here. We have our SAV stripped in in the valleys. Our E's have all of our SAV stripping on all the perimeter E's. And you can see when we have to take the drip metal off, the gutters are made for staying, so they're kind of in the way. And now when we put our new aluminum drip metal back, we're gonna have to flop this up, install our drip metal, unpeel the plastic, and flop it back down after the drip metal gets primed. So it's a bit of a process uh, to put this drip metal on, especially with I'm like crouching here to make sure I stay on. Got my trail running shoes on today. So you can see where we've taken the old paper off. This was not hot mopped. This is self adhered, and that tar gets stuck to the deck. So it's very hard to get this off and scrape this off, especially at this angle, at this 6 on 12 angle. And that stuff's slippery. If you stand there, you'll start sliding down the deck just standing there with that tar there. That's why I'm staying over on our nice clean side that we have here. Even this old fibered paper is having problems, but you can see how this is straight to the deck. Arrgh, this is hard to get up. You gotta use a lot of muscle to get this off. Let me rip this off. So this old fibered paper here, this is how it's, oh, it's corning. It's not to you. Tell looks a little bit aged. I'm not the biggest fan of that paper. Like my TU Plus here. One of the things here is a lot of the other roofers here in this area are putting this paper back on top of this one. And they're recovering over the old paper instead of tearing this off like we did here. That is not correct. This is polyfiber. They had this polyfiber here for the tiles to be foams to the paper. And the funny thing, you see all the caulk here? They screwed the tiles in. We had to caulk all the holes here so that they didn't have water come out when we ripped the tiles off. So you see all these caulk beads? That's us protecting the paper after we took the tiles out because of the screws. So all these little caulk beads all across. That's us just making sure they don't get water in the house. 
this was not here um, but you can see it's really bad to put polyfiber on top of polyfiber that doesn't mean code these people who are doing this all these homeowners who have this going on these people are taking advantage of them it's not very fair uh, but a lot of scam roofers on this side of the coast right now uh, because of the hurricane. A lot of outer staters just doing crap work like that. So it's very important not to go over the polyfiber. You cannot install polyfiber over polyfiber. So you can see a little bit behind me. Down on the old paper, you can see areas where there were broken tiles from the storm because you can tell where it's white instead of like kind of yellowed. And you can see, like right here, there's an area with a big caulk right there. That's bad wood there. That was a hole and a leak caused by the storm. So it's important when you're hiring your roofer, make sure you get someone good who's gonna protect your home during the demo like this, stealing all these screw holes. It's also important to hire a good roofer from the beginning, the first time you get your home done, because why you would screw tiles in when you don't have to? Because this is six on 12. You can phone the tiles in six on 12. They should be foamed in. The less holes you put in your roof, the better. Why do you want to put holes in a roof? Screws are cheap, way cheaper than the foam. So whoever's giving you a cheap, cheap quote, find out if they're foaming the tile or screwing the tile. You do not want to screw tiles in Florida. You only have to seven and 12 slope or higher because you get better attachment at that slope. If you have six out 12 or lower, you, you want to be using foam. And you want to be using the 3M foam too, the poly set. The tile bond stuff, not great. So, and you can see, look at all these holes in the roof. That we had to caulk up. Look at all these holes. You put all those holes in the roof, in a new roof, when you screw your tiles in. Not very great. You can see all the storm damage still here on this one. The broken tiles up on this roof. This is Gibson Ridges. It's torn tarp. So these people, they want to hire a local roofer. And they end up waiting forever because there's only so many local roofers here. You're better off bringing someone from across the state like us come and get your job done and do it the right way, like we do on the southeast side, the HVHZ style. Even though they're not doing HVHZ style, they're still going to get the special Perkins treatment. Let's see, we're getting this area covered up here with our TU. This little cricket right here is going to get coated. It'll help protect it because that's only a one on 12 while the rest of the roof is six up 12. Besides that, this is pretty standard tile roof, just very sloped and not an easy demo, thanks to this original install. But we're out sitting back too, so that's also not gonna be very easy to take off, but that's Florida building code, not HVHZ. See, we're back nailing the TU, just like we do back home, HVAC style. So we'll be back here once we get our tiles. Unfortunately, the tiles they picked, they wanted a certain color, will not be available for a couple of months. But we wanted to get this bad boy dried in before the next hurricane season and rainy season rolls around. So that's what we're doing. Get it dried in in June. Tiles come in a couple months, and then we'll be done. So. Better to not go through another hurricane season with a leaky roof if you can.